Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering some basic arithmetic, which could be applied to nursing math and all types of other mathematics. Um, in the first problem here, we have uh, we have a set or a series of decimal numbers, and the second problem also has a series of decimal numbers, while the third has a decimal number with three fractions, and the last is strictly restricted to fractions. Now. They, they're all going to work in different ways. For the most part, these are decimal numbers that are greater than 1. All right. So the, the, what the first task is going to be here is going to be which of the following is the largest number. The second task is going to be to arrange the numbers in increasing order. So as for our first task, we're going to find a routine that we can use to make this easier for ourselves. Now as we see, we have a, a number here that has a thousandths place. Here we have a number with a thousandths place. Here we have a number with a tenths place, and here we have a number with a hundredths place. The first thing we want to do is complete the missing term, the missing numbers for each of them. So we're going to add numbers which are called placeholders. Since this is a four-digit number, we're going to try to make them all look just like this, with three places after the decimal point. So this already has three numbers under the decimal point, so we're just going to insert them in here, like so, and try to align them right by the decimal point everything below it, right? So here we have 2.1 and the final number is 3.01. So as we see these numbers are missing the placeholders so we're just gonna go ahead and add those placeholders and we just add zeros as placeholders. This doesn't affect the number which keeps the number at the same value and what we want to do then is sort of ignore the decimal place and look at the numbers for what they look like. Like this looks like as if it's 2,222 this one looks like it's 2,099 this looks like it's 2,100, and this looks like 3,010. Now, if we had to arrange these numbers in order, right, the smallest number here is 2,099, right? Because we look at the first position, we see that 2 is the smallest number on this list. We have three twos. Out of those, we look at the next position. And the first number of these three numbers here from the 2, 0, and 1 is going to be 0. And actually, after the 0 will be 1, and after the 1 will be 2. So the order of the first three numbers here will be 2.099. The following number will be the next one with the 1, 2.100. The third would be 2.222. And the fourth is just the one with the 3 in the first place, right? So 3.010. So now to arrange these numbers in order, we know that 2.099 is the first. The second term is going to be 2.1, the third is going to be 2.222, and the fourth is just 3.01. Now this arranges the numbers in order, and from this order we could see that the largest number here is 3.01. Right, so there we have our largest, here we have our order. We're going to use the same technique to do this one because this also is a set of decimals. And whenever we have decimal numbers, all we have to do is add that placeholder and arrange the, the numbers one on top of the other and see which number looks bigger by ignoring the decimal point, all right? So we're going to just stack these numbers up first, 0 0.401, second number here is 0 0.602, the third is 0 0.75, and the last is 0 0.091. Now the only number that needs a placeholder is the 0 0.75, we add the 0 here. And again, we start comparing numbers from left to right. So we start with the left number, they're all zero. So they're all equal in the first term. For the second term, we have a zero, a seven, a six, and a four. So if we place these in order, we know this would be the first number. This would be the second, right, the four. The third number here on this list would be the six, and the fourth would be the seven. And that helps us organize this faster and quicker and more efficiently, right? So let's rewrite these in ascending order. The first number would be 0 0.091. The second number on this list would be 0 0.041. I mean 401, not 0 0.41, 0 0.401. The third number would be 0 0.602. And the final number on this list that we listed is 0 0.75. So this helps us arrange it in order. And once we have it in order, it's easy to find the largest number is 0 0.75. That takes care of both things, one shot. Now in the next one here, we have decimals and fractions. Now technically, there's two ways to do this. We can either change all numbers to fractions, or 
all fractions to decimal uh, to numbers, right? And by number, I mean decimal number, right? Um, technically, the easiest way to do this is changing all numbers to decimals because if we chose to change this to a fraction, we'd have four fractions. And the problem with fractions is we'd have to run something called the LCD to find the least common denominator of all the fractions. Or we could find the LCD of all the fractions and multiply each fraction, and the highest result from that multiplication would be the order of smallest to largest. However, since we've been using this effective system with decimals that works really well, we're going to convert all of these fractions to decimals. And to do that, we're going to have to divide each and every one of them. So I'm going to free up some space up here so we can get to that, and I can rewrite these fractions as decimals, all right? So here we have the fraction of 3 over 5, which 3 over 5 is directly just 3 divided by 5. So we have 5 goes into 3. We add the decimal place, as many zeros as we need to divide this to create the decimal number. Now 5 does not divide the number 3, so we add a 0 on top. And this just gives us 5 times 0 is 0. We subtract. We get 3, carry down the next 0. And that gives us 30. Now 5 goes into 30 six times, because 5 times 6 is 30 itself. So this is a perfect division. We get our remainder of 0, and we already have the rearranged, uh, the rewritten fraction. So this 3 over 5 becomes 0 0.6. Now let's divide the next term. We have 3 over 4. So 3 divided by 4 gives us 4 divided by 3. I mean, 4 dividing 3. And here we're going to add two decimal places again, just in case. And we try to divide again. And we bring up the decimal also while we're dividing. So 4 goes into 3 0 times. Bring down that multiplication. 0 times 4 is 0. Subtract it from the 3, and we get 3. Bring down the 0. Get 30. 4 goes into 30. That's going to be 7 times. That gives us 28. So 4 times 7 is 28. We subtract, and this gives us a 2. And we bring down the next 0. That gives us 20. So 4 goes into 20 5 times, and that's perfectly 20. So we're done with this one, and we get 3 quarters to become 0 0.75. And that sounds just like what it sounds like. 3 quarters and change is 75 cents. So here now, let's work with the final division, which is 1 half. And it's 1 divided by 2, which gives us 2 dividing 1.0. We'll add two decimal places just in case. 2 doesn't divide the 1. That gives us 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Subtract. Bring down the next term. We have a 10 here. Now 2 goes into 10 five times, which is perfectly 10. And there's no remainder on this. So 1 half equals 0 0.5. Now again, we're going to take these numbers and stack them top to bottom. And each number on this list, except for the 0 0.75, is going to need the final placeholder. And now it's like if we're comparing change. So we have 40 cents, 60 cents, 75 cents, and 50 cents. And if we had to arrange these in order, we'll then say this is the smallest amount. The following would be the 50. The third would be the 60. And the final would be the 75. So let's arrange these in order now from their original names, right? So the 0 0.4 was always 0 0.4, so we start with 0 0.4. The next term is the 60 cents. The 60 cents is the second term, which is the 3 fifths. The third term, oh wait, I'm sorry, not the 3 fifths. The second term was actually the 50 cents, which was the final term, the 1 half, the fraction of 1 half. The third term was actually the 60 cents, which is the 3 fifths, the second term here. And the final term is the 75 cents, which was the 3 quarters, which is the third term on the list. So here we have the order from smallest to largest. And the highest value on this list is going to be 3 quarters. That leaves us with just one left here. Now this one's a little bit more uh, complex than the other ones, obviously. These have smaller numbers. And over here we have larger numbers. But we have the same numerator for most of them. So most of the work in this should be pretty uh, clear to see. However, since they're not all the same denominators, it's going to take a little bit more work. And we're going to need that space up there to divide these numbers out as well. Now, in the case you're taking nursing math or something similar, this is going to be something very practical and something that you use very often. So get used to making these divisions if you're not allowed a lot of calculator. So the first fraction we have here is 7 over 20. 
So let's divide these numbers to find out the decimal value so we could use the same system of the decimal points with placeholders when needed, right? So here we have 7 over 20, and 7 divided by 20 becomes 20 dividing 7. We'll add two decimal places for the sake of it. Bring up the decimal point. 20 does not divide 7. We bring down the next term. So it's going to be 20 going into 70 once we bring down the 0. And 20 divides 70 perfectly three times. Well, not perfectly, almost perfectly, 60. This gives us a remainder of 10. We bring down the 0. And 20 divides 100 five times, right? Five times 20. If we add 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, that gives us 100. So this would be 5. This has no remainder. So 7 over 20 would become 0 0.35. And the one half is the same one half we had as before, right? And we have the work right here, actually. So we know the one half becomes 0 0.5. This is why it's always good to keep your notes around, because you never know when you're doing the same steps. It's good just to review your work to be sure. The third term we have is 7 divided by 10. Now, this is a common divider that we have. So if we have 7 over 10, again, the routine is we take the bottom number and divide the top number with the bottom number. And in this case, we'll add two decimal places, bring the decimal up. 10 does not divide 7. It's going to be 0 times 10 is 0. So the remainder of this is 7. When we subtract 7 minus 0, bring down the next 0, and we have 70 divided by 10, which is 7. That's perfectly 70. And this number will terminate right here, 0 0.7. And the final one is almost similar to the third one, which is 7 over 100 now. So 7 over 100 is... 7 divided by 100, right? So we add two decimal places to this. And 100 doesn't go into 7. That's going to be 0 times. 0 times 100 is a 0. So we subtract that, bring down the next term as 70. 100 does not divide 70 either because it's too large. So this is also 0. Multiply that together. 100 times 0 is 0. Subtract this and bring down the next term. We have 700. now. There are, se there are seven 100s in 700. So when we divide 700 with 100, we get that number 7. And this has a remainder of 0 now. So the decimal value for this one is 0 0.07. And again, we're going to do the same routine. We're going to line these up, stack them downward, and add the placeholders. So the first number is 0 0.35. Then we have 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.07. Now we add the placeholders, which only the middle two need. This becomes a 50 and a 70. And if we're just comparing all numbers without the decimal value, we know the smallest number is 0 0.07. The second largest number on this list is going to be 0 0.35, right? Third smallest on this list is 0 0.50, which is just 0 0.5. And the final one is going to be 0 0.7. Now, if we write them in their original forms, we just look above them. The 0 0.07 is actually 7 over 100, right? And our second term is going to be the 35, 0 0.35. The 0.35 here came from the 7 over 20, so that's going to be our second fraction. Our third fraction is going to be the 0 0.5, which is the 1 half. And our fourth fraction on this list is going to be the 0 0.7, which is the third one, right? So that's 7 over 10. And then we have them in order from smallest to largest, and the largest one is the final one. So 7 over 10 is our largest number. All right? Thank you.